we must go now. Papa! Tiago, go with your mother to the trap. Take this. It will always be your guide. Yes, Papa. We will join you shortly. Xavier, the painting. A malediction. This way. Signora, it is too late. Go. Senor, in here. Search them. Of course. Paris in the spring. Passion, romance, L'amour. I was working in art insurance. It paid the rent, just about. And then, by chance, I met Nico at a private view. You didn't tell me that you were back in Paris, Josh. We should catch up. Let's have lunch. Nobody move! No, monsieur! Not la malediction! Oh. Stay back. Once again, Paris had shown me her dark side. A brutal robbery, a senseless murder. Nico and I were about to be drawn into a new and terrifying adventure together. The gallery owner was dead. I guess sometimes playing the hero doesn't pay. My company had insured the exhibition, so I had a crime to solve. The cops would be here soon. I didn't have much time. It was my phone, mankind's most treasured possession. Nico wasn't answering her phone. No surprise. Hello, Mr. Rickenbacker? Stobart, what do you want? Mr. Rickenbacker, there's been a problem. Now why does that surprise me? This better not involve the blue lizard. I'm afraid it does, sir. There's been a robbery. Only one painting was stolen, though. Well, what are you wasting time talking to me for? Find that painting, or find a way to avoid paying out. Two ways to keep your job, Stobart. I see. Uh, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Anything else you gotta tell me? The thief had a gun. He shot the gallery owner dead. We insured him, too? No, sir. Well, that's one piece of good news. At least tell me you got some leads. Uh, no, no, sir, not yet. Well, stop chewing the fat with me and do your job. And call me when you have some good news. Uh, will do, boss. Poor guy. The priest was giving last rites to the gallery owner. I didn't want to interfere. The priest was administering the last rites. Paris looked as beautiful as ever. The street was quiet and upmarket. Not the kind of place for an opportunist thief.
It was a blob of chewed gum. The murderer left a pizza box on the table. The thief left the pizza box behind. I wondered what was in it. Well, no surprise there. Pizza. The guy must have been hungry. There was only one slice left. The killer made a lousy pizza guy. Inside the box was a mess. No one had noticed the pizza box fall onto the floor. I decided to leave it alone. There was no mistaking this body. It was Hector Lane, art critic extraordinaire. He and I had met before. There was nothing wrong with him. He was sleeping like a baby. Though perhaps not the prettiest baby I'd ever seen. For a moment, I thought he was dead. But from the snoring, I guessed he'd only fainted. Lane had fainted. I was going to have to find a way to revive him. Lane was out cold. I was going to need something to bring him around. Lane's jacket was stretched tight over his flabby form. A pair of nail clippers protruded from Lane's pocket. In the pocket was a pair of nail clippers. They were monogrammed with the letters H.L. Lane's nail clippers, the initials H.L., were engraved on them. I prodded Lane with the clippers. With all that padding, he didn't even feel it. I'd picked up a piece of pizza from the gallery floor. It could be useful. Even unconscious, Lane's body reacted to food. It was going to take something stronger than pizza to wake Lane. Father Simeon was attending to the victim. Excuse me, Father. Yes, my son. I'm George Stobart. My company insured the exhibition. My name is Simeon. Is there anything I can do? You can pray for his soul. A senseless murder. On the contrary, this killing makes plenty of sense. What do you mean? A great evil has taken place. This is the work of the devil. What? I am a Dominican priest. I know these things. And now, excuse me, I must pray. One minute I'd been planning dinner with Nico, the next I was talking art theft, murder, and the devil with a priest. Father Simeon looked troubled, but who wouldn't after witnessing a murder? Father? Yes, my son. What did you mean when you said that a great evil had taken place? Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. What? Peter 5.8 The devil is all around, Mr. Stobart. Did Henri say anything before he died? He said, Stop the car. I want to get in. Um, what does that mean? We may never know. What brought you to the exhibition, Father? The painting. Which one? La Maledictio, of course. The painting that was stolen? I had to confront the evil. Tell me about the stolen painting. 
Whoever gets close to it will burn in hell. What do you know about the man who painted La Maledictio? El Serp. He was a man playing with fire. The fire of eternal damnation. Would you like this piece of pizza? A man has just died. No thank you. Do you recognize these? Nail clippers? I'm not sure what your point is. The poster looked old. I didn't want to touch it. Spanish modernists certainly didn't come cheap. I wondered how many paintings they'd sold at these prices. I could have bought a nice car for the price of that. As they say, every artist was first an amateur. Fifty-five thousand. Huh, shame. Just outside my price range. All I needed was a mere 65,000 and this little gem could be mine. 70 grand? Oh, cheap at half the price. The alarm still worked on that painting. I wondered why the stolen paintings alarm hadn't sounded. I'd already tried the alarm on that one. Better not set it off again. For the discerning connoisseur, a soupçon at 80,000. That bust was pretty impressive. I wondered who'd been the model. The bust was balanced precariously on the pedestal. I didn't want to knock it off. With luck, the security camera had captured the robbery. The cable for the camera ran into the room marked private. The cable for the camera ran into the room marked private. The door was marked private. The door was locked with a keypad. If I wanted to get in there and look at the CCTV footage, then I'd need to find the number. I still needed to figure out the code to that keypad. Just 90,000 for this one. The tag said 60 grand. Wow, nice work if you can get it. Another alarm working as it should. The label said it was painted in 1932. The gallery wanted 80 grand for it. Hmm. A rare glimpse into the absinthe addled mind of the artist. A snip at only 80 grand. Sixty thousand for a sketch? Ouch! Another working alarm. Was the alarm on the stolen painting the only one that wasn't working? Challenging and experimental, like the 85K price tag. The stolen painting was called La Maledexio, painted by someone called El Serp in 1937, and worth just 40 grand. The stolen painting was worth less than the others. So why did the thief target it? This was where the stolen painting had hung. Why that painting? And why kill for it? The stolen painting had an alarm, which should have sounded when the painting was removed. I needed to find out why it hadn't. It was a vibration detector pad. I pressed the vibration detector pad. Nothing happened. It was the speaker cone for the alarm. It hadn't sounded when the painting was stolen. It looked fine to me. 
That wasn't the reason the alarm didn't go off. There was a small red button. So, the alarm wasn't broken. I suspected foul play. It was a small door. I guessed the alarm circuitry was inside. So that was why the alarm hadn't sounded. A wire had been cut by someone who knew exactly what they were doing. This was an inside job. Someone had cut a wire and sabotaged the alarm. The clippers were the perfect size to cut the wire. Could Lane be the saboteur? I had to find out. The button bypassed the pressure pad system. Cutting the wire had disabled the pads. The pressure pad appeared to be working fine, but the cut wire had ensured that the alarm wouldn't sound when the painting was removed. Now wasn't the best time to call Reckenbacher. Father? Yes, my son. Is there anything else you can tell me about La Maledizio? I've said everything I care to on the subject. Do you know anything else about El Serp? I've already told you everything I can. Do you know the code to get into the office? No, but you could always pray and ask for divine guidance. With respect, Father, I'm looking for a slightly quicker solution. A wire in the painting's alarm was deliberately cut. Cut by the devil himself, perhaps. Well, as far as I know, sightings of guys with horns and tails have been a little down recently. You mock me, Mr. Stobart. But as you will discover, the devil likes to have the last laugh. I think there's something strange going on here. Yes, Mr. Stobart. At last you see the truth. No, Father. I mean that the robbery looks like an inside job. The devil's work is always an inside job. Poor guy. There was no way anyone would have survived that. I didn't want Henri's blood on my hands. This wasn't the first time I'd looked into a dead man's eyes. I always wondered who bought those white framed glasses. Now I knew. He definitely looked better. I put the glasses back where they were. Best to leave the evidence the way I found it. There was a small piece of paper in the dead man's hand. It was too intriguing not to take a look. It read, 2.30 p.m. Be ready. Innocent enough until I realized that the robbery took place at 2.30 p.m. There was something fishy going on around here, and it wasn't just the canapes. I quickly replaced the note. I didn't need to look at the note a second time. It wasn't tough to remember. 2.30 p.m., be ready. A small purple nozzle was poking out of his pocket. In Henri's pocket was a tiny bottle. It was a bottle of Brett. The label claimed it would wake the beast within. Ah, 
regret the fragrance that dare not speak its name. A cryptic note in a bottle of overpowering cologne. No personal effects or anything else of substance. I definitely needed to check out that office. Mr. Rickenbacker? What now, Stobart? I got some new information on the Blue Lizard case. Go on, knock me out. The thief only took one painting. One painting or a dozen. Doesn't make any difference. We'll still have to pay out. But he specifically targeted that painting. The alarm wire to that one was cut. So, it was an inside job. Who else is at the gallery? There's a priest. Uh-huh. As my mother used to say, never trust a man at a cloth. And she should know she married one. There's a guy called Hector Lane. Lane? Why does that name sound familiar? He's an art critic. I think he's connected to the exhibition. Now, could it be him? Well, he's rude and ugly. It's certainly possible. Squeeze him till he squeals. If I was going to squeeze Lane, I needed longer arms than these. Find out who disabled the security system, then find that painting. And don't call back until you have. Time to awaken the beast. <coughs> what? <coughs> what was that? It smells like... like the 70s. Where am I? You fainted. Lane had the kind of looks that only a lifetime of fine dining can create. Welcome back to the land of the living. I wouldn't exactly call this living. Don't just stand there. Get me something to eat. I've had a terrible shock, you know. Excuse me, Mr. Lane. Food. My nerves demand food. I found a slice of pizza. I asked for food, boy, not a cardboard simulacrum. Oh, okay, if you don't want it. I didn't say that. Now give it here. Given the circumstances, that was surprisingly acceptable. Uh, now what's been going on? Oh, Henri, is he dead? Afraid so. Poor chap. Just like him to steal the limelight, though. Excuse me. Do I know you? Yes, our paths have crossed. In the Glees Gallery? Of course. The man with the absinthe. I don't suppose you... Uh, afraid not. Pity. I'm sorry, but I'm having trouble remembering your name. I'm George Stobart. I insured the exhibition. <laughs> I hope you have deep pockets then, my boy. Could I ask you a few questions, Mr. Lane? Fire away. So what brings you to Le Lizard Bleu, Mr. Lane? Dear boy, without me, this show would not exist. Henri, rest his soul, may have run this gallery, but I am its creative powerhouse. If Lane was involved with the gallery, then he had to know the code to that door. How long had you known Henri? As a friend, many years. 
Our professional relationship had only recently blossomed into this exhibition, under my curatorial wing. And now the poor fellow has gone and got himself killed. Do you know anything about the stolen painting? Of course, dear boy. La Maledicio, a little-known work, turned up at the last minute. What about the killer? Were you able to get a look at him? A delinquent in a tin hat. Beyond that, I don't really recall. Oh, yeah, you fainted. Those of us with a higher aesthetic are more sensitive to violence. What can you tell me about the stolen painting? La Maledicio? A challenging piece. If you like a wide cast of obscure saints and fringe Christian symbolism, of course. Not especially valuable, though. The thief won't get much for it on the black market. Who painted the stolen painting? Therein lies a mystery. We only know his pseudonym, El Serp. He was a Catalan, a modernist. His works are symbolic, religious. Are these your nail clippers? Of course. See, they're monogrammed with my initials. How about some more of this? I don't think so. As a cell volatile, it was acceptable. As a cologne, it would be barbaric. So, you help run this place? Maybe you can give me the code to that door. The code to the office? I just thought you might have the number. I do, but I couldn't possibly give you access before the police arrive. I figured I wasn't going to get the door code from Lane by playing nice. I needed to turn the heat up. Mr. Lane, you're really going to have to give me the code to that door. And why, pray, should I do that? Because the way the cops will see it, you're the prime suspect. We both know you're innocent, Mr. Lane, but the cops, well, they may not see things so simply. I might be able to get them off your case, but in exchange, I'd like the code for the office door. But that's preposterous. The police would have neither evidence nor motive. Funny you should mention that. I hate to say this, Mr. Lane, but you're going to be the number one suspect for this murder. So you keep saying, Mr. Stobart. Mr. Lane, this robbery is not going to reflect well on you. As I said, I shall take my chances. You're not getting that door code. This is an inside job for sure, Mr. Lane. The police are going to be very interested in your recent movements. I've been out of town for several days, and last night I retired early. Just saying. You're not going to scare me into giving you that door code, you know. I was onto something here, and I knew it. Lane was sweating. It wasn't pretty. Don't suppose you've changed your mind about giving me that door code. Certainly not. Give me one good reason why I should. I might just do that, Mr. Lane. So, you'd been out of town and hit the sack early last night? That's right. I've not been near the gallery for days. Someone sabotaged the alarm on the stolen painting. A wire was cut. What? Who could have got into the alarm system? Exactly. It was an inside job, Mr. Lane. You're not suggesting that I... Well, I'm afraid that's the way the cops are going to see it. That's preposterous. How could I possibly have cut the wire? Are these your nail clippers, Mr. Lane? Yes, they have my initials monogrammed on them. Huh. The perfect implement for cutting the alarm on the stolen painting. What are you saying? Well, the alarm was sabotaged, Mr. Lane. It was an inside job. Are you accusing me? How dare you? I had no reason to kill Henri, no motive whatsoever. Okay, but I don't think the cops will see it like that. And I sure would like that door code. Ugh, keep that noxious 
potion away from me. I wondered if there was anything out here I could use to put the heat on Lane. From out here, you couldn't see the stolen painting. This robbery was definitely planned. Sensors detect incoming audio source. I'm your friend. Call me Joey. The room looked like some sort of office for the gallery. I could just see the glow of the CCTV monitor in the corner. You gotta hand it to the French. They know how to take a leak in style. It was a pissoir. Art Deco, my favorite subway design. For a moment, I contemplated getting on the next train out of here. But a man was dead, and I had a job to do. I wasn't going to leave until I'd solved this crime. I've always been a sucker for Parisian stained glass. The Sacré-Cœur Basilica, the highest point in Paris. Impressive. The menu offered black coffee and a short list of soft drinks. The waiter wasn't exactly run off his feet. I wondered if he'd seen which way the thief went. Excuse me. Monsieur? There's just been a robbery at the gallery. Oh, really? You don't sound surprised. All property is theft, monsieur. And all art is property. Therefore, all art is theft. Do you not agree? Uh, well, uh, when you put it like that, it's <clears throat> hard not to. What do you know about Le Lizard Bleu? It's bourgeois, vacuous, and overpriced. Just like its curator Lane. He's always in here, you know. Talking art to his latest flusier. The gallery owner, Henri, was shot dead trying to stop the robbery. Life has no meaning the moment you lose the illusion of being eternal. Right. Did you know him well? Can we ever truly know another human being, monsieur? He spent little time at the cafe, unlike his friend, Monsieur Lane. Did you see anybody run out of the gallery earlier? There was a beautiful woman with a camera. She was chasing somebody. Oh, that must have been Nico. You know her? You surprised me. Can you tell me anything about the man she was chasing? I assume, monsieur, that like all of us, he is inherently unknowable. No wonder this guy's cafe was empty. Do you recognize these? They are nail clippers. Would you like a squirt of this? Are you suggesting a smell, monsieur? No, sorry. What do you know about Hector Lane? Lane? Oh, yes. He drinks here sometimes. He slid away last night without paying. Last night? What sort of time? After midnight, for sure. If you see him, give him this bill and tell him to pay up next time.
the check was from last night. But Lane told me he was nowhere near the gallery. This could be the leverage I needed to get the office door code from Lane. Thank you for your consistent indifference, monsieur. Perhaps next time you come I will give you a coffee. Perhaps not. Hi, it's me again. You assume, monsieur, that it was you last time. Anything else you can tell me about Le Lizard Bleu? Rien, monsieur. So you and Lane aren't best of pals, huh? The man is a second-rate critic, peddling meaningless aphorisms. So Lane ran up this bill last night, are you sure? Oh yes, he was plying his latest pickup with my best champagne. He wasn't interested in that the first time I showed him. Thank you for your time, monsieur. Father? Yes, my son. This is an unpaid bill from the cafe next door. I can assure you it is not mine. Hey, Father. How about a squirt? I think not. Take a look at this, Father. I've already given you my thoughts about that. How about it, Mr. Lane? Ready to give me the door code yet? Certainly not. Give me a single reason why I should. Guilty by way of nail clippers. I've been away from Paris for several days and only got back this morning. How could I have cut that wire? Take a look at this. What of it? It's your bill from the cafe next door. So, it's dated yesterday. Last night, in fact. 12.30 to be exact. You said you were out of town. You sure drank a lot of champagne last night without paying the bill. But you told me that you were away from Paris last night. I hate to say it, but that sounds like a lie to me. Tell you what, you give me the code of the door and the police need never know. A motive and proof of involvement. Not looking good, Mr. Lane. You are a blackmailer, Stobart. Just doing my job. <sighs> All right. You have me. Well, number is 6397. But I admit to none of these spurious accusations. I had the code. The police would be here any moment, so I had to work fast. What was that number again? Six, four, two, no. Everyone, hold it right there. Damn it. I am Inspector Navet of the Paris Serious Crime Squad, and I hereby declare this crime scene open. I mean, closed. Now, nobody move, especially you on the floor. Mo, I want a total lockdown. Nobody in or out. Apart from me, of course. I needed to get back into the gallery, but a familiar figure was guarding the door. It was Sergeant Mou. Our paths had crossed before. Sergeant Mu was blocking the entrance to the gallery. Mu was the kind of cop that got places through obedience, not intelligence. Mu stood watch by the gallery door. Sergeant Mu, we meet again. Aha, Madame Collard, an unexpected pleasure. I was in the gallery at the time of the theft. Can I get back in? 
I am sorry, but I am under strict orders from Inspector Nave. Uh, nobody in, uh, nobody out. And I must correct you, madame. It is no longer just a theft. It is a murder. Mon Dieu! That poor man! I witnessed the crime. I've got to get back in there. I'm sure you can make an official statement in good time. I saw the thief. I think I can help the investigation. I am implacable, Madame Cola. Who is Inspector Nave? Ah, the most promising young investigator on the force. A genius. A man blessed with almost superhuman insight. He sounds highly perspicacious. Madame, it is not for us to talk about the inspector's sweaty proclivities. He is about to solve his third case in as many days. So, what's he got that the other investigators don't have? Blood's better. He is the world expert. He reads the entrails of the crime scene like a book. I really need to get into the gallery and speak to Inspector Nave. Tut tut! He is not to be disturbed. He is applying his famous scientific methods. Any moment now, the case will be cracked. I certainly hope so. I am dog-tired and want to go home. I chased after the shooter and got a photo of him. Inspector Nave will be delighted! You've got to let me into the gallery to show him. Absolutely not. So, I cannot go in without Inspector Nave's permission? No. And to get Inspector Nave's permission, I need to go in. Exactement. Have you ever heard of Kafka, Sergeant Mu? Madame Gola, I do not see what soccer players have to do with this. No, he's a... Never mind. This was madness. Sergeant Mu wasn't going to let me in. Here's my press card. Do you have a statement for the paper? Yes, madame. Stay away from the crime scene and let the police do their job. And always leave a light on when you go out at night. Why are you so tired, Sergeant Mu? I have been working for three days with no rest. Nave is a genius in his field and he assumes that we all have his energy and vigor. Oh, you poor man. If you'd like to go and get some sleep, I will watch the door for you. That's very thoughtful of you. Ha! A cunning attempt to make me a deserter, madame. A gendarme never leaves his post. Well, how about a hot drink? Ah, that would do the trick for sure. Unfortunately, I mustn't drink on duty. My doctor specifically warned me against it after the last... Uh, Incident. That incident you mentioned, what happened exactly? I don't want to talk about it. All I can say is it was very unfortunate. I am on duty and I need to focus. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Sergeant Mu. You've been so helpful. The body was still in there. I had to get back inside. I had vital information. I needed to get back inside. It was an office. The room was full of strange trinkets. The pissoir was decorative and unpleasant. It was the pissoir. Ah, le maître. I wasn't going to leave without comparing notes with Georges. I had no intention of leaving the scene of the crime. My press card. It opened some doors, but not as many as I'd have liked. My smartphone. Possibly the journalist's most important tool. Hello. 
Hi, Georges. I'm outside the gallery. Thank God you're safe, Nico. I tried the phone, but I couldn't get an answer. Inspector Mu is out here, and he's not letting me in. I managed to grab a couple of photos, but the guy got away. Poor Ori is dead. I know. Why kill him? I've been trying to find out. Turns out the alarm was tampered with. Looks to me like an inside job. So, no ordinary robbery? And no ordinary painting. The priest claims that Mamela didn't see you. Help me out when you get back in here. Ronnie, I'm at the exhibition over in Montmartre. You won't believe the scoop I've got. You're kidding me. That place is a dump. What could possibly have happened to make it exciting? A painting's been stolen, and the gallery owner's been shot. Anybody who saw what happened, scope out the place. And call me as soon as you get a story. If you're quick, we can make the evening edition. Bye, Nicole. This could be the scoop I'd been waiting years for. Salut. Bonjour, madame. I remembered something else about the crime. Then you should tell Inspector Nave immediately. So I can go inside then? No. Do you want to see my photo of the thief? Ils ne passeront pas. You know, if you are tired, surely your duties are suffering. Madam, I am a consummate professional. I would never shirk my responsibilities. I will uh, stand here as if my life depended on it. Or my job. Mu wouldn't be interested in my press card. Thanks, Sergeant Mu. An intricate stained glass window, irresistible to any tourist. Madame. Bonjour, Monsieur. Whatever it is you want, we are closed. Then why are you standing here? You would not understand, Madame. Try me. Because I look at you and I know you are like all the others. The others? The pretty women who shop, who gossip, who have their spa days, their almond croissant. <laughs> that bad, huh? <laughs> And the men with their grooming products and their shiny shoes and their skinny suits who come to my cafe and ask me for plates, macchiatos, frappe. I see your point. Is this what we fought on the barricades for, madame? Ripped up the paving slabs, bled on the streets. Isn't it? No, madame, it is not. We fought for ideas, for philosophy, for freedom, equality. Fraternity. Vive la Revolution. And do you know what drove us on as we fought? What fueled the streets of Paris in that glorious spring? What made our hearts soar? Uh, cheap wine and free sex? No, madame, no! It was French Café Noir that inspired us. The simple demitas. The black, sweet taste of freedom. So that's why you closed? Yes, madame. I serve only thinkers, philosophers, revolutionaries. And you, madame, with your polite top and your pointy ears, are none of those things. This is a cafe. Yes, to the right people. On any other day, I would have given this guy a straight one to the chin. But there was a chance he could help me get into the gallery. As always, Paris looked beautiful.
The menu offered black coffee and a small selection of other drinks. The waiter watched over his tables with barely disguised contempt. The waiter was watching over his tables. Monsieur! Life is fleeting, madame. The sands of time are running through your fingers. Well, that may be, but... We know not what we want, and yet we are responsible for what we are. There's been a crime. That is terrible, madame. But you know what they say. No, but I think you're going to tell me. Life begins on the other side of despair. C'est vrai, no? Well, I guess so. He was pushing me to the point of despair. During the riots, we battled the forces of oppression. Oh, really? That must have been terrifying. It was. Except that they made me stay behind the barricades with the other baristas. We made coffee by the litre to fuel the resistance. I've never brewed so much coffee. Of course, our brave heroes spent half their time going for a pee. But with our coffee inside them, they fought the running dogs all night long. None of this was helping me get past Sajan Mou. Au revoir. Monsieur. The road to enlightenment is a long one, madame. Perhaps you will walk that road with me. Au revoir. Monsieur. Madame. I am not what you think I am. Being is. Being is in itself. Being is what it is. Sartre. Being and nothingness. Bravo, madame. A lucky guess, perhaps. Au revoir. Monsieur. Madame. The waiter clearly hated his clientele. I had to convince him I was different. To do is to be. To be is to do. Do we do we do, huh? I shall ignore that remark, madame. Can we talk? I am sorry, but I have no time to discuss human resources or pension plans or your water cooler gossip. Well, me neither. Au revoir. Monsieur. Madame. Every existing thing is born without reason, prolongs itself out of weakness, and dies by chance. I know the feeling. Au revoir. Here's my press card. La liberté. Madame, you are not the person that I took you to be. You must accept my deepest, my most profound apologies. Well, of course I accept. But why? La liberté. The great journal of freedom. At the height of the battle, as the tear gas blew and the blood flowed, it was La Liberté which carried the voice of our revolution to the world. I know now that you are not the kind of woman who would ask me for almond croissant. You are a true daughter of France, and I am your humble servant. Monsieur. Madame. Could we have a little chat? Any time, madame. The waiter didn't need to see my press card again. Did you see anything happen at the gallery earlier? I saw you running after a pizza delivery guy. Somebody said he killed someone. That's true. He stole a painting and shot the gallery owner. Uh, how close we are to death. And yet how far from ever comprehending it. 
Hmm, well, right now I need to get back inside and figure out what happened. I applaud you, madame. To seek the truth is a worthy ambition. As a journalist, that is my duty. How about some coffee? For you, madame, of course. There is only one coffee that I can serve you. Black, strong, and in a tiny cup. One moment. Here is your coffee, madame. Thank you, monsieur. The coffee was hot and strong. Could you make me a coffee to go? For a fellow revolutionary? Of course, madame. One moment. Here's your takeaway coffee, madame. Thank you, monsieur. Monsieur! Madame? I'm fine with the coffee, thanks. As you wish. But remember, to do is to be. To be is to do. Do we do we do, huh? I shall ignore that remark, madame. Could we have a little chat? Any time, madame. So you saw the thief? I saw a man running. It is not for me to ascribe motivation. How about some coffee? Well, you already had a cup. I do not advise drinking more than one. Would you make me a coffee to go? But you already have one in your jacket. Help me, Nico Collard. You're my only hope. Salut. Bonjour, madame. Sergeant Moo, I brought you a coffee. Coffee? Fantastic. Just what I need. But wait. I must not. My little p p p problem. I'm sure one little cup of coffee won't hurt. I'm tempted, madame, but I cannot risk it. I am sorry. So, this incident... It involved you, some coffee, and your... A little problem? It is a tale of woe, madame. I'm only a sergeant. Well... Since you seem quite understanding, I shall elaborate. Please do. I was in charge of canine security for the president himself. One day, on vacances, he went for a... Private discussion with a lady minister. I stayed alone with his dog, but I had drunk a coffee to stay awake, and nature came to call. So I tied the dog to a tree and went for a secret pee-pee. When I came back, the dog was having a liaison dangereux with the lady minister's terrier. But how did they find out? Well, two months later, the President's Labrador gave birth to six beautiful mongrels. And I was busted to sergeant, just after the President's divorce came through. You are a victim of a great injustice, sergeant. You think so? But of course. You knew you must not fall asleep at your post. You were guarding the President himself. Well, the President's dog. Ah, it was the same thing. Yes, I suppose. And by drinking that coffee, you made the ultimate sacrifice for our glorious Republic. Your career. 
Hmm. Now you put it like that? And now France is calling you again. She is saying, drink, Sergeant Mu, drink! She is? She is. Drink or fall asleep at your post. Which is it to be? I suppose it is drink? Bravo, Sergeant! Oh dear, oh dear, excuse me, madame, I must use the petit gendarme's room. It has gone straight through me. Could you watch the gallery door for me? Oh, you can count on me, sergeant. I distracted Mu. It was now or never. 